Hi guys, Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. I popped in a few minutes early. I just want to get everything pulled up on my computer so I can answer your questions as we go. Hi Jennifer, just let me get this going on here so I can answer your questions. And there I am. Okay, great. I'm gonna to try to keep track of um, questions as best I can while I'm painting and answer them as we go. If I don't see them, I will certainly go back afterwards and take a look. I'm gonna wait a few minutes for people to get here. I think we can maybe talk about, uh, if you saw my uh, little video the other day on tracing, did everybody get their tracer and have it traced onto their, can um, their canvas? Did it work out for everyone? Hi, Susan. Hi, Phyllis. Hey, Barbara. How are you guys? Hi, Susan. Thank you guys for watching. It's going to be a fun night. You probably all have seen the painting. I'm going to place this camera onto the canvas when we work, so don't worry about that. But here's the painting. I will post... Well, actually, this picture's posted on the site that you can use to for reference and also with the supply list that you got. Hey, Denise. Hey, Linda. Hey, John. How are you guys all doing? If you guys would say hello uh, when you come on, let me know where you're watching from. We had over 400 people signed up for tonight. That doesn't mean everyone will paint tonight. Once I'm finished with the video tonight, I'm just going to upload it, and then it will stay on the Facebook page, and you can watch it anytime. Start it, stop it when you need to. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Cynthia. Thank you guys for all popping in. So I'm going to get started in a minute. I'll talk about the supplies first. I want to make sure people are here so I don't jump ahead too far too fast. Um, I gave you a, uh, a supply list with the colors. A lot of those colors could even be mixed if you have the primary. So I am going to show you uh, how I painted mine, but I'm also going to give you some tips on mixing some of the colors if you'd like. I know paint's a little scarce in some stores right now. If anyone has a problem finding paints, let me know. Um, hi, Patty. I, I grew up in Hudson. Nice to see you. Hi, Sheila. Right in, in, in my town. Hi, Karen, my sister-in-law from Florida, who just painted the coolest trucks, the ceramic trucks. I know you guys have seen me paint those. Um, Karen's came out great. I'll share them on the page. I'm not sure I did that yet. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Colleen. I know we have lots of groups painting. I know Kim's got a group at her house. What a great way to um, celebrate the holidays. And as well, if, you, if you're not painting tonight, or even if you are and you want to do it again, maybe on a littler canvas with your family on Christmas or Christmas Eve, or by Zoom with a little private group, that would be kind of fun too. So I'm going to pop in and get started. Um, I have the design traced on the canvas. I'm going to move my camera now so you can see the canvas and my hands working. You don't need to really see my face. Um, I'll pop in again at the end. So I also have a, a hair dryer handy. I'm hoping that I can paint different areas and let it dry so I don't have to put that hair dryer on. It sounds awful and it's loud. Hey, Bob from Wells, Maine. Uh, how are you guys doing? You know I'm up in Maine too. I, I I recognize you guys' name. So and Julie, you got a group too? Oh cool. I cannot wait to see the pictures afterwards. Please take pictures in progress and then upload them to the in the comments here and even um post pictures of your paintings after. Hi Kim. Hey everybody, I'm glad you're all popping in. I'm oh Mary, you made it. Great. We're just um gonna get started in a minute or two. Don't worry if you fall behind. Like I said, this will all be put up afterwards and you can watch it anytime. So I'm going to focus this camera over my canvas so you can see what I'm doing. All righty. Let's see. I'm going to, I, I meant to explain too that I'm having a little trouble sometimes with my internet these last few lives. Um, so if I see that it has stopped, I will keep checking it or let me know in the comments if there's a glitch and I will re you know, re-sign on, but I think we're all set. Can you guys hear me and see me now? This is the, we're still live. Let's see. Okay, I think so. Hi, Denise. Hi, Glenda. Hi, guys. Are we back? Sorry, this, the wonk, wonky internet tonight, but I want you to just comment and let me know that you can see me now. Guys. Okay, that's okay. You can get everything ready and um, do it anytime because the video will go up. So just let me know um, 
Hi, Wade. Hey, Kim, make sure, uh, let me know that you can hear me. I have the internet going in and out a little bit. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down, uh, the camera down again, and we're going to get going. And again, I'm going to watch on my computer here and try to keep up with any comments that you guys might have. I will. Hey, Gina. Okay, I'm going to get started now. I'm going to just move this so you can see. I want you to be able to see my color palette a little bit there and my painting. And I am going to take a look and make sure that... Okay, I think that's... um. How does that look, you guys? You can see the canvas, you can see the paint a little bit. I'll try to keep it in front of the um, canvas for you. I'm going to move it up a little bit so I can... Scoot down. All right. How is that, you guys? Can you see that and hear me? All right. Okay. So we're going to start with the background. I like to start with the background for saying it's trying to reconnect. I'm not sure what's going on with that. We've done a lot of these lives. This is the first um, couple of times, this last few times, when uh, things were kind of going a little wonky. Looks good. Okay, that was just a minute ago. Okay, so background first, then the, where the snow is going to go. We're going to do a dark blue up top here. We're going to blend in a little white while we do a light blue, even though that's where the white snow goes. Okay, so let's get some of our dark blue out. Now, I like to have a really dark blue on that sky. It's very dark on the top. It gets lighter as we move down. I'm going and I'm using just, you can use these two inch chip brushes, which I love. You can use a wide flat brush. You can use a smaller flat brush, whatever works well for you. Just take a little tiny bit of the black and mix it into your blue. When I'm painting my canvas, I paint around the edges as well, just to finish it off. And that way, if you didn't want to frame it, you can certainly just hang it up the way it is. I'm not really worried about mixing a perfect shade. I'm just doing the top section. When I apply my paint, I don't want to go in one direction and get it streaky. Acrylic paints are a little see-through, so you might need a few coats. So if you use a little slip slappy kind of a motion, it'll keep it from having streaks going straight up and down. Or analyze this after, and if it looks like it needs a second coat, we can certainly do that as well. And any sort of blue would, would, would do. I like to start with a darker blue. It's a phthalo blue. It's a nice primary blue. It mixes well with other colors. I'm going around my tree. I'm not being super careful. I'm doing just the best I can. And if anyone has any, I am watching the comments, so I'll keep glancing over there. Again. Just going around my truck here. How I'm going to get those light, all the paint is wet, we're just gonna add a little white in there. My palette, I'm gonna add a little white. And this will get us started, the blues and the, and the whites. So is everybody ready for Christmas? Can you even believe we're looking at Christmas that quickly? It's crazy. Comes pretty quick every year, so I guess we shouldn't be surprised. Okay, so we are just going to kind of go around our little snowman here, go around his nose the best you can, just to leave that so we know where it is. Air of black and blue on the top, below. And now I'm going to just take a little bit of my blue paint, take some off the brush, pull a little, and can you see now you can kind of I'm going to wipe some of that paint off my brush. It's a little bit 
too loaded with paint there. And look over it so that we don't have all of those set. Work on the bottom and we'll come back up here and do another coat of the blue and we'll get a little lighter down here. Okay, so that's a perfect way to... We are going to move down to where the snow is going to be. It's a very light blue. Just take a little bit of white shade. And again, we're just going to cover it. This side uh, will only need one coat. We're going to go over this boards, but let's just get the white of the canvas all covered to start. The reasoning behind painting this a light blue underneath is because when the white snow goes on top, you'll have some dimension and painting it a perfect shade of the same blue the whole way around a little different, which is what I like the look of. When I'm painting a painting, I tend to paint from the background forward, most always in the truck, you know, behind things. But because I want to have some dimension, I'm doing this light blue to start can go around his little stick arm, but I'm not worried too much about hitting it. Uh, the brown paint for the arm will come, will cover it over. And, um, and keep letting me know, because I see that the internet is, is wonky tonight, and like I said, I do not know what's going on, but it seems to pop back on. If you've missed little bits and pieces, please let me know in the comments. I'm kind of watching those to see if it is all going to work out tonight. I have to do a little research on that. That really, like I said, hasn't happened before. Now, I'm going around my snowman. He's going to be pretty much the same color tones that we're using, but I want to know where he is. So let's just paint around him for now. And I'm going to um, finish putting this in. And then don't forget, you can paint your edges as you go the same way. Is everybody caught up? Are, they, are you able to keep up? I'll try to go a little slower if need be. I just want to get this on and let it dry so that you can see this. This section, you can see the paint is a little streaky and see through it does not matter. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to let that dry now. Now's the time I think I'll base coat some of the things. Because of the acrylic paint, I do a few coats sometimes. And then I'll go back on and highlight and, and shadow. And I really want that base coat dry. So while this is drying, let's work on some of our other little areas. For instance, let's just do the tree. We'll, we'll base the tree in first. I use, and you can see on the painting, um, I use a really dark green to start and all these little light bits are on top. So let's take our green paint. If you have a dark green paint, that's great. If not, just mix the green that you have, whatever it might be, with some of your black. So I've got a little green there and I'm gonna get a little smaller brush. A smaller flat brush would be good. This is probably like a number, oh, it might be a, a six or an eight, I think. And again, I just mix with my brush. I take a little bit of black into my green. I wanna just see if you can see that, what I'm doing there. Can you guys see the, my paint palette? Let me know in the comments and, uh, and I will move that if I need to. It's a little difficult now, especially me, who's a very messy painter, to not put my hand right in this wet paint. But I'm going to try my best since I'm not wearing a painting shirt for once tonight. And this tree could be as dark as almost black. Fine. I, I do a lot of really dark on my first go around, my first coat, and then I put on the lighter colors just to see it pop. You might have seen me do that with the ceramic pieces. The ceramic pieces, we were painting black altogether. And when you put those light colors on, they certainly pop. When we do the truck next, the red, I'm gonna do it like a maroon, a darker red. I'm gonna put on some lighter shades of red and then almost a little orangey red. And again, if you have these colors, great, but if not, I'm gonna help you mix them, so don't worry about that. Let's just get a lot of the white. My first task is usually getting the white of the canvas covered with color. And then we'll go back with the shading, highlights, shadows. We'll finish up with detailing. We'll put the snow on. I have some fun techniques for the snow for you truck and tree. We did so many ceramic ones, but I thought a painted one would be fun too. So we've got the tree base coated. We'll just rinse our brush off. And I'm going to grab another one because I guess I didn't put my water on the table. I'll grab that in a minute. 
why don't we go ahead and paint with the blues we were using here. We'll use a smaller brush, a smaller round. This one um, I, I find is a nice size. And we're just gonna paint in where the driver is, where the window is. It's just a, a blue that matches the sky color that we had. I'm using it right from my palette there. Just go around your little snowman best you can. And I'm barely leaving a little space where the little steering wheel is. It's almost just like a little a little white spot that's going to guide me afterwards. Does not have to be the perfect shape that you've sketched on. Just go around it the best you can. Get his nose out there so you don't so you don't lose that. If you're more comfortable with a square flat brush, that's okay too. Oh, hey Kim, I got your message and you know me, I tend to do to go a little fast and talk a little fast. So I am going to try to slow down. Keep on top of me, let me know. We have plenty of time. Okay, so we've got the window painted. Give me one second, I am going to get some water before my brushes get all hardened. There we go. It's important to keep your brushes cleaned up because if you don't, you can get the paint. So say you're using your brush and you let it sit and the paint gets up in the ferrule and hardens, you will lose a good brush that way. The brushes that I'm using are not really expensive. They're all um, acrylic brushes. But if you take care of them and wash them out after your painting sessions, you will have a brush that lasts a long time. You can wash them out with some Dawn or whatever you have, maybe for dish soap. If your brush, because these acrylic brushes tend to get a little splayed sometimes, the hairs will stick out, Put run them under very, very hot water and reshape them. You can reshape them with the soap too and it keeps them a nice uh, point to them. Like I said, even though they're not expensive, if you take care of them, they will last a long time. I wanna fill in our truck now because it's a big area and I wanna give it a chance to dry. So we are going to get our red out I'm gonna keep an eye on the comments here because I don't want to miss anything. Hey Glenda, don't worry about being behind. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. We have to wait for these colors to dry and you can catch up. And I will go a little slower and I'm gonna try to get that right in there so you can see it. So I'm gonna get my red paint ready, but don't you guys worry. Why don't you finish up with your blues I'll, I'll hang out a little bit with you and chit chat and we can get you guys caught up. Oh, the tree, sure, okay. Here's the tree. This is what I have base coated in. It's just a green and black. Here's what it's going to look on the painting after. So I start very dark. You can see my black green that's in there and behind the brights. Then we're gonna take a couple of different shades of green on top when that dark green is dry. And you can see while we're there with the, the truck here, um, it's got a maroon kind of a look to it. And we're going to put on some uh, brighter reds and then almost this little orange here as well. Oops, there we are. I don't think you can see that, but I'll keep bringing that over so that you can see that too. All right, I'm gonna work on, uh, oh, you know what I did miss right here? We did this window here. There's a little tiny bit showing in the middle there, the, the windscreen in the front. So just paint that in for now. The paint is drying, so this is dry down here. The top is almost dry. Hey Patricia, I see your message. I know, I don't know why the feed is going in and out and now Patty says the picture is sideways, so let me see what I can do about that. I'm not sure why it's sideways. I don't know why that's sideways. I see that now there too. Huh, let me, um, let me see if I move this somehow because it doesn't usually come out sideways like that. I'm not sure if that's any better. No, I'm not sure.
Yeah. Let me keep, let me, let me just, while you guys are catching up, let me see if I can't get this so it's, um, the right. Let's see if that's better. Maybe I can make it up a little bit there. Okay, let's move this and see if we can't get that in better. And then you can, it's not, it won't be sideways. I'm not sure what's up with, I've, I've used my camera this way many times and I'm not sure why it's. All right, so that looks like it's a little better. And I will pull my palette over every now and then so you can see what I'm doing with colors. I want you to be able to see the painting mostly. Okay, is that better? You can see it, um, the correct um, orientation, I think, now. Okay. So, the red that we're going to mix, and remember, don't worry about being behind because you can always come back and rewatch this. As soon as we finish, I'm going to post it, and it will stay up on the page, and you can watch that anytime. So, I've got my red paint out. Just a little tiny bit of black, just to make kind of a maroon, rustic color. All right, a little bit of black in the red. And we're just gonna base coat it in using the flat brush. I think a flat brush works well for this sort of base coating. The round would take a little bit of time. Alrighty. And you can see how I was going around some of the little bits and pieces already when I'm base coating. I'm just gonna go around best I can. We can finish up with all the little details and make the edges a little finer if we need to. But there's a lot of detail that goes on top. It looks like I might have forgotten that little piece of windshield. But all the details that go on top and then we add the snow and it really adds a lot at the end. So don't worry about your painting as you go and worry about what it looks like because the base coating is not the prettiest. Hey Kim, you're not late. Welcome. Thanks for watching. We are, um, like I've said a bunch of times, the, the painting is going to stay up on the page. Just jump right in. You're a great painter. You will have no problem. And thanks for your patience tonight. I know this is, um, we've done a lot of lives with the ceramics, and, and I don't know why we're having glitches tonight, but I apologize. Hopefully it'll all work out. And I think what I'm going to do after we get done with the truck, with this base coating of the red, we'll go back up and work on the sky. So if you are still on some of those bits, we're going to kind of reiterate what we did there. That's um, that's pretty good for a base coat. We're just going to get this one little area here. There. Okay, let me see. Well, thank you guys for watching. Hi, Eva. Hi, Kate. Still going to try to keep a watch on the comments as they roll by. But if you need to send me a private message, please do that too. I will answer any of the comments even after we are all done. Okay, let's go back to the sky area. How is everybody doing? Do you have your sky areas in in your, in your uh, light blue down below? Just let me know. Okay, so why don't we hop back in, back to the sky color. Here's my palette for that. We'll go back to the big brush. And we don't have to cover it 
the whole thing exactly because the base coat's there. We just want to go on a little bit, oops, it's kind of thick, a little bit of the dark. And again, you can see how, and if you missed that little beginning part, I sort of use a slip, slappy, back and forth brush stroke. Second coat is taking nicely. It's all we're going to need. I'm going to get into this my regular. It's a phthalo blue, but any of your dark blues would work. I'm just going to go just with the blue now, just to kind of cover up some of those streaks that were there. I'm, I'm loosely going around the tree. Now, we're going to get down towards the bottom a little bit, and we're going to get a little lighter, but let's just get the blue on there to start, and then I will go on while the paint is wet with some white. It gives it a nice little look to your sky. I love this blue for skies. I love this blue. This phthalo blue is great for mixing colors, makes a great um, sky, ocean. This mixed with a deep green makes an absolutely great New England ocean color. If you add a little more white to it and green, you get a beautiful tropical teal, kind of beautiful Bahama sort of uh, color for the ocean. Really, it is a nice color. So we've got it all painted again. It's wet again. Just pull a little of your white and just see how nicely that blends. I am just going to move it all around until it's blended with that blue. Same over here. I've got a little bit of glare from the light, so I'm going to tip it just for a minute. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be covered with snowflakes. It's just kind of a little bit of light and dark in that sky. It's a dark night, snowy sky. The darker the sky, the better the snowflakes are going to show up. Oh, hey, Jen. Tag teaming. That's great. I want to see pictures. Cool. Okay. You can kind of see now that's enough for the sky. That's all we need to do. Once it's dry and we spatter that snow and make those snowflakes, it's going to really pop. You're going to love it. Okay, down here. What I do now is I take a clean brush. So I'm going to just grab a clean, another flat brush. Take just your white paint. We are not going to cover the whole thing with white because that would defeat the purpose of putting that blue in. But I'm going to just slip slap the paint on here and there. And what you can do is sort of drag it across that blue sometimes. It's very little paint, but you can see how it's just like a little bit of windswept snow. I kind of go a little heavier here, so it's like a little snow drift. Yeah, anywhere you want it to look like a little snow drift. I'm being a little messy. I am not doing it perfectly by any means. You can you go right into your little snowman for now because we are going to paint him in a minute. I'm going a little heavier with, and I want you to see it, I'm going a little heavier with the white paint. I'm just grabbing some and just sometimes I go with my brush, you know, parallel, but vertical. Sometimes I use the whole flat edge. Sometimes there's barely any paint on it and you're just getting a little bit of white. It's going to start looking like snow to you. I'm going to get a little fresh white because I'm getting a little bit of blue mixed in there. So you can alternate little thin areas of white with some heavier ones. This is fun. You can do as much or as little as you like. Behind the snowman, we want a little bit, but we don't want too much. We want to keep it pretty blue around him, as you can see um, in the painting. He stands out because there's blue around him. So right now we're putting all of the snow on. We're going to put the snow around him. Once he's done and it's all dry, we'll just wash in a little bit of darker blue just to make him pop out from the background. So we'll still get some, some white back there. Can you see how I'm doing it just in little areas of snow drifts? Does that make sense to you guys? Oh, hey, Kay. Well, beginners or not beginners are very welcome. I try to go step by step to really help you if you have not painted before. And if you have painted before, I try to give you some tips and tricks that you can use as well. How is everybody's snow looking? 
What do you think? Does this look like snow to you guys? I let it dry and even go back and add a little more snow. We can even go back with a palette knife if you want. I even added some of the snow text, which we will go over later, but this is what the snow text looks like. Oh, get it on camera there. It's a textured product and it's nice on the ceramics, but it's nice on the canvases too. I put it on with my finger and it gives it some texture. Let me show you in the painting because I want people to have a chance to catch up. So let me see if you can see on the painting. Can you see in here? It's really textured and bumpy looking. And also, we can even add some glitter on there after. I did not, but I think I will tonight. So can you see that textured snow on the, on the canvas? Oh, Patty, that's okay, freehanded, it would be great. Um, it's not really di difficult and it doesn't have to be perfect. These little vintage um, trucks are better if they're kind of wonky and vintagey looking. Hey, Nancy, I'm glad you're here. Nancy's one of my painters. She's an amazing painter. I can't wait to see your pictures afterwards. Um, Vicki, what kind of brand of paint uh, with the white bottle? I have a variety of brands here. This white bottle is just acrylic, regular acrylic. Um, I just happened to get it in a big half gallon. So I pour it in that white uh, bottle just to make it a little easier to get out. That's just Craft Smart. That's the Michaels brand. I have a variety of brands here. I'll, I'll go over those while people are catching up. My favorite, if I was to choose, would be the Deco Art Americana. I really like the coverage that they give, um, but you don't have to use that particular brand. The Craft Smart um, from Michaels is, is fabulous. The Apple Barrel from Walmart, which is like 50 cents, works. The only thing is some may not have as much pigment and some may take a couple of coats to cover. But I even find that with the deco art sometimes you have to have um, a few coats to cover. So what I have is a variety of brands. I also have the tube acrylics. If you happen to have the tube acrylics, those work as well. Um, so that is the brands of the acrylic paint. They're all acrylic, they're water-based, rinse out your brushes with water and whatnot. All righty. You can see things are drying pretty quick, which is great. I want to put another coat of green on that tree. And I just want to get rid of some of those streaks. So let me just rinse off my brush here. Are people able to catch up a little bit? How are y'all doing? Where are you, where are you at in your, um, in your project? Just let me know. Can you see that's a little darker now? We're going to go on and just get another coat of that dark green. It doesn't look like much yet, but wait till you see the light green on top of it. And this will be the only coat we need is the second coat. I do hop around a little bit just because I want to get something down, let it dry, and move off to another area. Since we've got the tree in the truck, I think I'll go on and do that little star next in yellow. Yellow is one of those colors that is a little translucent. So I want to go on there now and add that. Here's a little trick. Because I know I'm not going to be able to go on top of this blue with yellow without it turning green or covering well. And I have made my star misshapen when I did my blue sky. I would go back, if you have an instance where you're going over a darker color with a lighter color like the yellow, just paint it white first. So you're kind of getting back to just what you had for the canvas. Paint it white first, and that will save you a, a lot of coats of your yellow paint. There. There. So I'll let that dry, and then we're going to go put a few coats of yellow on there. We're not going to do all the detailing on the tree just yet. We're going to get all our things pretty base coated, and then we're going to worry about all the details. Let's do our little snowman inside here. He's going to be a, a light blue as well. Let's make him a little shade lighter than the windscreen so that we can see where he is. It's going to be sort of like what we did with the snow. So just where the snowman is, just make him light blue. There. Just a little, oh, and he's got a little, actually his little hand is on the steering wheel, so we'll just do that. We're gonna dry brush white on top of him when it's dry, and then he will look more like a snowman. Hey, Jackie, it is a great picture. 
That's okay, Glenda. Get your base coat on and get your snow on. And there's plenty of time because I'm going to go back actually and add a little more snow. So don't even worry about it. Just take your time. We've got plenty of time. There's no... um. No time limit. We're the boss of ourselves tonight. We are going to just enjoy painting. I should have mentioned it would be nice to have your Christmas music playing. I unfortunately cannot do that because sometimes um, if you put a music with your Facebook Lives, Facebook, with because of the licensing and whatnot, they will take it down. So I didn't dare put on the music as much as I would like to hear it. So let's go ahead and get some more of our detail. We'll let that dry and wait for the yellow. His hat, I did green now. The colors I used for the sample are by all means not what you need to use for yours. I did purple and green for my um, accessories on my snowman. Please feel free to use any color you would like. You could do polka dots or stripes or not, or whatever you want to use for your little guy's clothing. I also should have mentioned if you would prefer to not do your truck red, you could certainly do it in other colors too. You could just use the same technique. Say you wanted to do I don't know, a purple one. You would just start with a dark purple, like we started with a dark red, and lighter coats on top, which you'll see when we start shading that. I think we may jump ahead and shade some of that before we do the tires, because if we shade it and we hit the tires, we don't have to worry. We can just shade it as we like, and then we'll do the detail with the bumpers, the tires afterwards. Why don't we fill him in first, let him dry, and then we'll shade the truck. How does that sound to everyone? Okay, so again, just like we did this guy, he's also going to be a light blue. The snowman's going to be a, a lighter, lighter shade than all of this. So let me kind of mix that up so you can see. Again, a little bit of blue, a lot of white for this one. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little more white. We want it not bright white, but we don't want it as dark as this. We want something in between, and that's a little bit of a light blue, which I think that shade is going to work perfectly. So has anybody been watching any good Christmas movies? I, I tend to try to get up early in the morning before work and watch something, and uh, there's a few I haven't watched last year that I found some new ones. Anybody have any good suggestions for some new things? Some new movies? I just watched, oh, you'll love this one, on uh, Netflix. I just watched Dash and Lily. It's a one season, eight maybe episodes. It's really adorable. It's a great series. I think you'd like it if you wanted to look for something Christmassy to watch. Has anybody else seen it? Just let me know if there's any suggestions because I'm always looking for something new. I did watch, I rewatched the Christmas Chronicles because I did not want to watch two until I rewatched one. It seems like that is a very popular movie right now as well. Okay, so we got that all based in. Let's work around our truck a little bit. Is everyone ready to work on the truck a little bit? What do you think? Christmas Chronicles, yeah, Marianne, like I said, I can't wait to watch two. I think I'm going to save it for Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, since it's a very odd holiday this year. We're all doing different things. Um, I thought that might be fun to look forward to. Yes, Kurt Russell was a fabulous Santa. It was so good. I, I know I watched the first one. It just seemed all new to me when I watched it the other day, so I can't wait to see what happens in two. Hi, Lena. Thanks for joining. Oh, talk about the snow, Julie? Sure. Okay, so we base coated the light blue for the whole bottom area, just to start and let it dry. Then with just, when that's dry, I just use my flat brush, again, and just str straight white paint. And we can go back on again and do a little more because we can always make it a little thicker. So I've just got a brush load of white paint and I have it thick in some areas where it's, say, a snowdrift. Some areas the paint is barely on the brush and it's just a light little dusting, say, of snow. I don't want to talk about snow. I hear the snow coming. I love the first snow and I love Christmas Eve snow, but right now for, for getting out and getting Christmas things done, it would be nice to not have a storm. 
So can you see how I'm kind of just making it a little thicker where it's a little snowdrift? It's not done in any particular way. It's just I use the flat of the brush to get some of those snowdrifts. You can, so great about a flat brush, you can get a nice wide stroke like that. But you can also get a thin stroke by just using the brush on its edge. It's really a versatile brush. It's really nice to paint with. All right, so if you need more in information on the snow, we'll go back again. But um, that's pretty much what I did. Sky is, is, is good. Snow is good now. We've got the base coat on, on our snowmen. We're gonna let that dry, so I am going to, my white on my star is still a little wet, so we will not put that second coat, that first coat of yellow on yet. So we're gonna go to the truck now. Can you see, I'm gonna show you again, because <clears throat> I know it's hard probably for you guys to go ahead and look at the image um, if you're watching the video. So you see we have the dark already on here. I'm gonna dry brush some coats of, and maybe not even so dry brushed at first. Let's see how that goes. Uh, red and then some orangey red. So I'm going to go back to get my palette, my palette with the um, red paint. I'm going to add a little orange because we're going to eventually work into a lighter shade. If you don't have an orange paint, no worries. You just mix a little yellow with your red. You can get a nicer uh, orange that way. I am going to get a flat brush. I'm not using a lot of different brushes really. You could use a flat one round Maybe the big chip brush for the background or a wider flat brush. Take just, and I said dry brush and we will dry brush eventually and I'll show you that technique, but for now we need to get some red on there. So I have a little bit of paint on my brush. It's not dripping with paint, but there's some on there. Let's just go and brighten that up a little bit. I'm just gonna paint a little bit over what we have just so we can get rid of some of the streaks that are there. Just brightening it up a little bit. And can you see how you can, it's brightening it up, but you can still see some of that dark in the background, which is kind of nice. There. Okay. Let that dry a minute. We're going to do the same thing again, and then we're going to go with some of the orange. I think in the meantime, a good thing to do would be to base coat our accessories on our snowmen. And I'm going to just use a round brush for that again. Oh, Marianne, I'm sorry. Yes, it's, um, I tried to put in that it was Eastern uh, Standard Time here. But do not worry, because even if you want to kind of just watch what we're doing, as soon as we finish, I'm going to upload the uh, video live, and you can watch it anytime. You can stop it and start it, and it, and I'm still going to answer questions in the comments, so no worries. Just um, hop in if you take a dark blue with a little black. Did the top of my sky. Use the regular blue for the bottom. You're going to need a second coat anyway, so just get that on there to start. When it dries, we and the whole bottom where the snow is was just base coated in a light blue. So just, just mix a little bit of blue and white. Doesn't have to be any particular shade. It's just a light blue and we're painting the whole bottom scene. So if you want to start with that, at least you can get it, get it going and um, see how we're doing the rest. And like I said, you'll be able to watch this again later. So no worries. Okay, so let's just base coat what we have here. I've got purple for my hat and two shades. I have the dark purple. And then I have a light purple, but you can also just mix whatever color you're gonna use for your hat with a little bit of white. I happen to have a lot of purple, so I have those two colors, but really feel free to mix up any color that you have with a little white and you can get two contrasting shades of whatever color it is that you choose. So I'm just going to paint in his hat. Is this orientation better, you guys? I think it looks a little better on the on the um, video. There. 
so there's the and you can see see how streaky the purple is sometimes that works for you depending on what you're painting I'm just gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna put a second coat so no worries there and I'm gonna go right into my light blue now I'm not even washing my brush off I'm just drying my brush off on my paper towel not light blue purple sorry light purple I'm gonna just go into that color with the same brush lots of times if I'm going to a darker color too than, than what I'm painting with I'll just dry my brush from the paper towel and then I will just go right into the color I don't like it when I rinse my brush off and if it's wet at all you're gonna get little blobs of water or streakier paint so when you do rinse your brushes out in between your colors be sure to dry it off really well with a paper towel that way you won't run into that diluting your paint and and all that it, his little scarf is also purple I am mixing a little bit of that light and dark I just want to have the same color family but I want it to be a little bit a little bit different Got the little tail of his scarf there flying out the window we've got the little knot and then just there so now I will rinse my brush off now because I'm going to go into the greens and purple mixed in with green might not work all righty let me get a little bit of a brighter green here and I also love when I'm doing trees or anything, I get that dark, dark background that we've got there. We're gonna go with a Christmas tree green on top. And then I love these lime greens, uh, leaf green, I guess you could call it. Again, you could certainly mix it. <clears throat> if you take the green that you have here, mix it with yellow, you're going to get that nice light green too. So don't be afraid to mix your colors. Don't be afraid to pull them all out and try, see what you come up with. And I'm going to just base coat his hat with the darker green in here. And then I'll just put a little of that light green on top afterwards. Alrighty, we'll do that little red band later on. We may as well put the orange in while we have orange out on our palette for the nose. Oh, you know what? First, let me do this scarf, sorry. We'll just get this, this scarf here. And then we're gonna go and highlight her with some white too. You managing, it'll be how, how to gear my lives a little better. Okay, we'll do the orange noses since we have the orange right there. She's kind of looking up and waving, so we'll have her nose pointed up a little bit. And again, if you had that problem, like I said, with the star and say her nose got a little bit too blue, just put it, paint it in with the white first and let it dry, and then you can pop that orange right over it and it will cover fine. I'm going to get a little yellow out too and do that star while we're doing little bits and pieces. I'm trying my hardest to not get paint all over me. I'm not a very neat painter. I don't know about you guys. I tend to make a mess and get it on my clothes. I'm very brave to wear something that doesn't have paint on it tonight, but I suspect I probably got paint on it. And I'm doing the star yellow. If we would like to later, I didn't think of this on mine, but we could use a metallic gold on top of that yellow. Whenever I do a metallic gold, I sometimes base coat it with like a yellow ochre or a yellow first, just so that it pops up a little brighter and isn't uh, very translucent. Okay, let's give our snowman some little white detailing so he's not looking very blue because he looks like a blue Santa right now. I mean, blue snowman now, sad snowman. I'm going to take some white. I'm just going to move that over into this palette. Let's get a little fresh white here. I'm just using paper plates, uh, styrofoam plates for my palette. You don't need to have really a lot of fancy equipment. Like I told you about the brushes, the acrylic brushes, they are um, not terribly expensive. The paints are pretty easy to get and not very expensive. <clears throat> I use a few paper towels and then I use a 
uh, a styrofoam palette. And I'm going to just take, I'm going to use my round brush. You could use a small square, whatever you're comfortable with. I find sometimes with the round brushes, if you just flatten them out, you get a nice, some nice coverage there without uh, getting a flat brush out. And I am not going to paint exactly over him, but I'm just going to kind of highlight him with a little white. So you can see how you can see the blue underneath still. It gives it some dimension and some shadow. <clears throat> His little hand on the steering wheel, we'll, we'll put that steering wheel in. But I like the way it looks with the little blue around the scarf, for instance, under the hat. Just looks like it's a little bit of a shadow. If that white sinks in, like it does sometimes, and when it dries, it's not popping, I'll just do a quick couple of strokes of white on top of that just to bring it up a little brighter. But I think for now, that looks fine. And I'm going to do the same thing on her. So we're just going to kind of see the little strokes I'm making. I'm not painting it perfect and filling it in. I am just giving her a little white. But I want a little of that blue to show through. I'm going to leave blue here. It's like a little shadow behind the snowbank. I'm going a little brighter right along the edges. And when this is all dry, we are going to give a little shadow around her of blue to make her pop right to the foreground. So does everyone see that way that I'm doing those little white strokes? All the comments are right on the picture. Just swipe right, Patty. If you swipe, swipe away those comments, they will go away for you. Okay, there. I think that's good enough for now. Let's, we've only got tires, headlights, bumpers left of white canvas showing. And that's what my goal is, is to get all of the white covered and let things dry. And now let's paint in the tires in, in these sorts of things. So the tires are black. Let me show you the sample again. Tires are black. The middles are gray. Then we'll paint on a little uh, snowflake. And this, writing in the snowflake, if you're a little unsure about actually painting that on, no worries because you can use a paint marker. Detailing you can do with the paint marker, which would be nice. All right, so now to make your gray, you could just do some black and white if you don't have the gray already. Just a little bit of black and white, mix it up on your palette. And just paint that center, um, that little round center. Do not worry about it being a perfect circle. Like I said, this is a little vintage truck. It could be a little wonky. We don't want it to, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm really used to, of course, doing the paint nights in person with everybody, and lots of my painters are here tonight, and, and welcome to the virtual platform. So it's it's a little different this way. It's it's new to me. I'm, I'm gonna work through it, and, and I would love some feedback and suggestions because it is all new to me. Um, one thing that we, we were not going to have happen is what made me think of this is we don't want to be comparing our painting to our neighbors or to mine or to the person over there and feeling bad about our own. Every single person's painting is a creation and they are all unique and they are all wonderful and it would always be a, an issue at paint night when people would compare to, to, to other paintings because I would tell them when you go home and you're not looking at everybody else's paintings and my painting and your neighbor's paintings, you're going to wake up tomorrow and look at your painting and you will be pleasantly surprised. So don't f feel bad about your painting. Anybody has any issues or questions, send me pictures. I'd be happy to help you or critique or whatever you need. Just direct message me if you would like. I will monitor the comments though all, all the time and uh, answer questions as people have them but if you if you need me right away just please send me a message I would be happy all right let's just get these tires in the truck is dry we can put another coat of red on there in a minute if you're using iPad or cell phone just turn sideways and then go away yes yes if the cell phone you just um you can just swipe them away too I know I have them on my um phone as it's recording and sometimes if I'm using the phone right at talking into the phone it is a little distracting to have those comments there but if you swipe right they'll go right away now I am painting this flat so that you guys can see 
I would find it much easier, and you might want to try this, is I have to hold it sometimes. So if I hold it and I have it upside down or every which way, that works better for me a lot of times. So feel free to paint it upside down, paint it sideways, whatever it takes, whatever you need to do. There. I did my bumper in silver, metallic silver. If you have a metallic silver, that's great. If not, just paint it gray. Uh, that works too. I am going to get some silver. I have some silver paint in the small tubes as well, but then I had a little issue finding paint at Michael's, so I did find this more over in the section where you have the uh, chalk paints and that sort of thing. So I did find a big uh, container of the silver as well. Also, is anyone having trouble finding supplies and whatnot? Please let me know. I can give you some tips. I, I have had good luck lately at Joann's, actually. They've had the best selection. And I guess um, Michael's is out of a lot of paints, but I think someone said that if you order them on, on the website, you might have a better chance. My This paint, again, like I said about the metallic gold, sometimes is a little translucent. So sometimes I would almost even paint it gray first and then put the silver on top. So we're going to let this dry, see if that works. If not, we'll go on with a little bit of gray. So I should have probably, when I did my star, put my headlight on. I did not. So I'm going to do that now. And we won't put the little grill on just yet. We'll wait until we um, do the uh, another coat of silver there, and until we get all the red in, too. Okay. All right, how are we all doing? Throw a comment up there if, you, if, if you're catching up, if you're doing okay, if you need any additional help on any other part that we've already done, if you've just joined us. Feel free to keep letting me know how you're doing because I am, you know, I am watching there. So, our truck looks pretty good, but let's just give it a little bit more highlights. And I'm not going to paint the whole truck like we just did. I'm just going to go on here and there. You see it's mostly in the middle sections. And this is kind of where I'm gonna go in and add a little of that orange, but I wanna wet the paint first. I don't wanna go right on top of the dry red with the orange because it's gonna pop out too much and it'll just look like weird strokes. Why I am putting this down is just to give a, a, a layer of something wet to blend that orange into. So I'm gonna take my brush, it's loaded with red. Just pull a little of the orange aside. Sometimes you're not going to even know if that's going to work unless you, until you put the paint on the painting. And then you'll know if you need more or not. So I am just doing some little strokes like this now. It's not showing up a lot. And actually, it's looking a little dull. This orange is a little bit uh, past Ellie. So I think it's coming a little dull. I am going to try. I think I'm going to have better luck just mixing some red and yellow and getting a, a better orange there. Trial and error a lot of time. And this is how you learn new things, is just trial and error. There. <clears throat> and we do have these little hubcaps here, which I've highlighted kind of with the orange. This is turning a little pink to my liking, but let's just go ahead with it so we can get the eye outline of that. Just... That's just where the little hubcaps are going to, the, um, they're not hubcaps, they are where the wheel well is, I guess, or something. Okay. So the paint underneath is still a little wet, so we are going to go right on there and just blend in a little bit. I don't want to lose too much of my dark, so I'm going to leave that on the edges. I want to leave a little down here. And I am going to fix that little boo-boo. I'm going to let that go and dry for now. And I am going to go and see if I have a better orange, too, than that. Because I'm not happy with the way that's coming out kind of pinky. Because we're going to do a little bit of orange across the running board here, too. Our tires are still drying. I think that uh, one coat probably is going to be enough. If you want another coat of black, if yours looks streaky, you can certainly do that. We're going to let the areas where we're going to paint in a design, like the name or 
the snowflakes, we can use the paint marker. But the trick with the paint markers are is make sure your um, acrylic paint is really dry. If you drag a paint marker over paint that's even slightly wet, it will ruin the marker and it will clog up. So let's let everything dry really well. And at the end, we will go ahead and add our details with that marker or a paintbrush. I'll show you both ways, whatever way you would like to do it. Um, glossy or matte? Well, I don't really, uh, I bought some matte paint the other day by mistake and I was not thrilled with it. A lot of these paints do not say they're gloss or matte. The glossy paints a lot of times I buy because I use those gloss paints to paint glass and they do a lovely job, but they work fine for the canvases as well. I just will say I wasn't happy with the matte paint that I bought at all. It came out really dull and chalky looking. So if there is a choice, I would go with a satin or a gloss maybe. And again, any questions, just pop them up there. Okay, very streaky on my little accessories here. So I'm gonna give a quick second coat to my hat and scarf there. Afterwards, we'll add, I put little stripes and little dots on them. I didn't put the little tassel here, so we'll just do that. I just kind of made a little circle and just pulled out a few brush strokes. Again, I'm just drying off my brush and going into the purple. And give that little stocking cap. Now, there's all sorts of little caps. You could put a little flat cap, a little knit cap on him, her, whatever you would like. This is the fun part, is changing up these little accessories. Okay. That should be fine. And now we'll let that dry. We'll put a second coat up on the of the green on the scarf here. It's just my bright green we're going back into. And I'm using the round brush again for the detailing. Did everyone find their supplies okay? I know, like I said, it's a little hard sometimes. and uh, But I've got almost enough paint here to open a store so I seem to be okay but if anyone needs help just let me know and I could send you some guidance and where to find what okay there might as well put that little arm in there which I think I did it kind of a black brown let me grab some brown paint we'll put in a little stick arm I am going to look for some orange and here is my brown. All right. So just a tiny bit. We just need the tiniest little bit of the brown. I always put too much paint out on my palette. But I'm trying to be better and more conservative. And this guy, I'm just starting on top there. And if you can see, I'm using a round brush. And you can get a lot of... Uh, detail with this brush. So say you doing his arm. I start his arm. I press a little bit on the brush and look at you can lift the brush as you go and get it thinner. It's kind of cool. So take a little, I'm going to take this little palette out so you can actually see. So say you're doing a stick or a tree trunk or something that you want a nice line, but you want heavy and thin. Just give a little pressure on that brush. I wiggle it a little bit. And as I am wiggling it, I am pulling that brush right off the page. That gives you that nice thin line. So you can press wide and go really thin. You can light pressure and go really thin. Do you see how I kind of twirl, press, and then twirl the brush? And then you can just add the little details. That could be great as a tree or a plant. But there's a lot of brush strokes. And I'll, and I'll do some more classes with just some uh, practicing on some of the brush strokes because you can get multi-stroke uh, flowers and leaves. Like I, I would do leaves with just one stroke, with one brush with three colors on it. That's always fun and it takes practice, but it is um, something I'll make some short videos of and, and show you. And, and then you can just practice them and then we can use them when we're painting something later on. Okay, so I just started on his body here. Press down like I showed you and then just wiggle it a little bit and up you go. Give him some little finger, her, I keep calling her him. Give her a little few fingers. I let that dry and you can get as detailed or simple as you want. That simply could be enough for his little, her little arm. When it dries, I like to hit different things, like I said, with lights and dark. So can you see, I went on after and added just a little bit of a light brown on top just to give it some dimension and make it look a little bit more like wood. 
Alrighty. I have a little boo-boo there. I'm going to just touch up with my gray. I sort of just hit that that way, so let's just touch that up. Actually, the star covered pretty well. I think I'm going to leave it. I don't think I need a second coat. And I think I'm going to work on the tree next. How is everybody doing? Are you getting caught up? Are you having any issues or any problems? Please let me know. I'm going to try to make sure that this painting is right in your view there. There. Okay. Good idea, Cynthia. Cynthia's going to base coat and do the details later. I actually even have a photograph which... Let me try to upload in the comments now. That is just what the painting looks like with the base coat. So let me put that in a comment now here for you if I can. Let's see if I can add a photo here. Not sure I can add a photo, but I am going to post it. I will just post it up on the page as a uh, new post so that you can see. If you'd like to see and have a little visual of what the base coating just looks like, I'll, I'll add that up. So it's going to be a post above here. If you scroll up, you'll be able to see that. There it is. Okay. There. I'm going to load that up just so you can kind of get an idea of a little bit of the base coating, especially the background and what it looks like. I did go a little darker to start with my truck than this picture might show and we're going to shade a little bit to get some of the de definition in that truck as well but we're going to just work on our tree next all right so that's up there if you want to take a peek and i'm going to go ahead and start showing you how we put on a few more shades of green on that tree just to brighten it up i'm going to use my square brush for this one because i like the fact that i could use it on the flat side and as a chisel edge so we're going to go back and we're going to just get the the brighter christmas tree green it's going to take a few coats but we can take our time with that i like to start down in the base here and work up that way we're sort of putting rows of branches on the tree and if we work from bottom up the next row will come on top of the one you just did Otherwise, if we did it from the bottom to top to the bottom, it would all be chopped off. So we want to start down here. So I'm just, with my brush flat, I'm just kind of about hitting the red. I'm just kind of going and giving a little bit of branches like that. Let me see if I can do that a little closer for you. Now I'm going to just build that up in rows to the top. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit so you can see. And with my flat brush, I am just putting some little brush strokes here and there. I'm not sure if that's a good angle for you, but I'm gonna show you on the plate what I'm doing. I've got the green paint loaded on my brush and I am just starting pulling up. Just press, pull up. Can you see how you've got these little jaggedy edges? So I'm just kind of pulling up, pulling up, pulling up just to get some of the brighter green on there. We're going to work our way right up until some of that really bright green, which we will put on with the chisel edge. But I'm going to see if this, I know my hand is in the way a little bit there, but can you get the idea, you guys? Can you kind of see what I'm doing? And I'm starting out on the edge where you have a little, you know, a little bow here. Okay, so it's nice because you've got the dark showing through in the back, but it's getting a little brighter. When you're doing coat after coat of some paint, you always want to let the first coat dry. If you go over what you did and it's wet still, you're just going to take off that coat so you're really not gaining any traction. So have some patience, let it dry a little bit. We don't we, we have plenty of time tonight and we're going to let that dry a minute and then we're going to just keep going. I'm going to stay right here with this bit because I think we should um, give some people time to catch up. We really have come right along in this painting, so we don't have a lot, you know, left to do. Some shading, some highlighting. The best, most fun part, putting the snow on with the toothbrush. Has anyone done that? Use a toothbrush to spatter on the paint. It's really fun. Okay, 
where it's dry, I'm going to kind of put a few more coats on. I'm going a little heavy. Can you see it's a little paint's a little heavier now? Use your edge and kind of make your little bows. And if we did not have such a dark background, these brighter areas wouldn't show up at all. So that's the reason we do the dark. A lot of colors mixed with black for the background. Let's let that dry a little bit now. I will show you a little bit of sh shading, how you can do a little shading around uh, Mrs. Snowman there, Mrs. Snow Lady. And this is a little technique I'm going to show you first on the palette a little bit. And you guys can watch if you'd like or just keep up with your... Um, what you're doing and you can always come back and check this little technique out. I am going to get, I'm going to mix a little bit of my black, the original darker blue we started with. I'm going to mix that up with, I don't want it to be too gray. I'm going to mix that up. I just want a little tiny pile of paint that I can dip my brush in, but I want to have it darker than what we started with down there. Got a lot of white on my brush there, so let me get there. That, and we only need a little bit. So I'm going to just mix that up. I just used my brush just as a palette knife. I just wanted to mix that up. Here is how we are going to do this technique of shading around the snowman. You got your flat brush. You're going to just dip it into the water. I'm going to, my water is disgusting now. Dip it into the water and just pat it off in the paper towel. You're not drying it off completely. You want some water in your brush. Take the corner of your brush into that color we just mixed. And then when you shadow around your snow lady, you can see how the water is mixing in with your paint right on the brush. So we've got color on one end of the brush, water on the rest, and that gives you a nice way to make a shadow. Is that the only way you can do this? No. Just a little technique I wanted to show you. You could certainly just paint in a little shadow around there if you wanted to. But I'm going to show you, I have my brush with just the water, and you can go quite a distance without reloading. I'm just going back into the dark color. I just do it on the corner of my brush. And I'm just going to trace around Mrs. Snow Lady. And because the paint is very wet, you have time to, to play with it. You have time to shade it can you see how she's starting to pop right out now though again this is when i like to i have to turn my painting upside down and around it's hard to paint them at one angle and i've done the whole snow lady plus the little demo to show you all with that one load of you know paint and water on my brush can you all see that can you see that little technique Okay. All right. I want to make sure you guys are still with me, so maybe send me a comment or two. I just want to, oh yeah, okay. I'm watching the live a little bit, but there's a delay. I just want to make sure I haven't lost the connection. Okay, so you can see that little shadow makes her pop out. I don't mind doing it even under there. That kind of gives you a little definition between the little snowballs. This can be used anywhere. It can be used behind here. We have a pretty good definition here, a pretty good shadow, but you can always do it there. My water is a little icky, so it's looking a little muddy, so I'm gonna just clean that up. Again, any of these little snow drifts that you might wanna put a little shadow in, I did it underneath the truck here. I put a little water on my brush again. I'm going to take a little bit of that dark. And I'm going to put a little darker area under the truck. Maybe get a little bit of darker paint there. Just kind of like maybe where a road would be or just where the truck is driving. So it's just a little darker under there. Again, you could go in any way you want some definition. You could put a little darker behind some of your little snow drifts. It's a nice way to shade. It's the way I'm going to shade here a little bit. 
There's a couple of ways you can do it. So why don't I show you the shading uh, with the water technique on one side here, and then I'll show you how to do it with just the paint as well. So you can have two, two techniques to choose from. I'm gonna give you guys one second to, to catch up a little bit. I'm gonna get myself some clean water. When you do that little technique with the flat brush and the water and the paint, it's nice to have clean water so that you don't get little muddy bits like I was getting here. So I'm gonna go, go get some clean water. I'll be right back. All right, there. That'll help a little bit. How does everyone think their painting's coming out so far? Are you happy with what you're working on? How are my ladies that are in the groups doing? Everyone having a good time? Hey, hi, Amy. Sure, you can um, certainly finish that up later on. And like I said, I'm still going to be around for comments and um, whatnot. So please. Anytime you want. Oh, thanks, Marianne. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh, you're here still here, Cynthia. Yep. Okay, great. I saw. Oh, hey, Lena. Hi, hey, Kim. All right. It's just hard to to be here. Unlike a Zoom meeting where you can get some feedback and chit chat back and forth, it's kind of hard. I'm here like with the dog and myself, and <laughs> that's it. Okay. So I'm going to show you the technique again over here. We need a little bit of the dark color to put our brush into. So I am going to go back and just mix up a little bit of that maroon color. Paint's a little bit dried on my palette now, so I just want to mix back a little bit of black and a little bit of the red so that we can just dip into that. And back to our flat brush. And again, just to show you, I'm just gonna, it's not the clean water anymore, but cleaner. I'm just dipping my brush in but I'm really patting off some of that water. You don't want it to be dripping, but you don't want it to be dry either. So just pat off some of the water. It's a technique that takes a little practice and eventually you will know exactly how much water to leave on and, and whatnot. And but it's, it's, it's handy. It, it helps in it's shading a lots of things. I think you like it. I'm taking just a little bit of that dark uh, maroon on my brush. And, and you can pat, you can actually just, before you even go to the painted piece, just Pat the paint out a little bit, and can you see that nice gradation you get from paint through to the water? I am going to use that and just with the dark air edge in where I want a shadow. In one stroke, you get that nice shadow. I'm gonna show you another technique. It's very easy to do too, whatever you're more comfortable with. The other way would be just to take the color that you have that we mix that dark just paint it on with your round brush or your flat brush. It looks pretty solid there. And we want it to be solid here, but we want it to be feathered here. So you can do that by just taking some water on your brush now and do it like this way. Just before the paint dries, just, just soften that edge. So you can see it's sort of the same you're getting there, you're getting to the same place. It's just two different ways. You have time before the paint dries, but you do want to do it fairly quickly so the paint isn't dry, because if it dried as that harsh line, it would be very difficult to get that feathered edge. But I really like the way that shades behind those, are they, are we calling them wheel, wheel, wheel wells? I can't remember what they are. I'm going to keep moving because I think I'm kind of getting you out of the picture there a little bit. Oh gosh, Amy, how old is your is your little one who's going to destroy the house while mommy's painting? <laughs> oh yeah, Cynthia painting everywhere. Yeah, because this is my non-painted clothes, which I'm slowly getting paint on. Okay, I have a few other areas that I shaded. I shaded down here a little bit where that um, steps, the uh, running board is going to be. So I'm just going to go back and this way you can watch a few more times. I'm going to go right into my water, pat off that paint, go into my dark again on the corner, pull it out a little bit so you can so you can see how it's blending. And then right behind that wheel, uh, that running board, I do a little strip like that. You could do a little bit under this little um, lip there on the bed, the bed of the truck. 
And now you can see I am running out of water and I'm running out of paint. That means you can just dip again, dry it off, take a little more paint, make sure it's okay. And then I did like a little, maybe like a little dark here around where the door's going. I think that might be it around the bumper, I guess. Around that bumper. I think that's all I did with um, maybe a little here. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to try a different orange now just to give a little highlight. But that's our shadows on the truck. And I'm going to try, I pulled out another orange. Let me just see if that is a little better. It just seemed to me that because that other one, it doesn't look it there, but it must be a little pastel -y because of the white in it was making it just too pinky. I want more of a strong orange now. Actually, you know what? I do have a pure orange. Let me grab that. That's going to be a better choice for us. I also have some big quarts of paint. Um, so if anybody's short of paint, let me know. I'm here. I can fill up little cups for you. This is more of a pure orange. And that's what we need rather than some of the oranges I was picking out. All right. So a little bit of that orange. Because I know it's going to be a little transparent. I think we might be able to go right on there with it without mixing. Let's see. Along the top of what we're calling it wheel wells. Yeah. I'm just going to. Make it a little lighter. So I like to add lights and darks over the base colors. So we did our truck kind of a dark maroon to start. We put on some coats of red, got our shadows in. And now I'm not going to paint the whole truck orange, but look at if we just do a few little strokes just here and there, doesn't that add something? It adds a little dimension. It, it gives it a nice look, I think. And here, I'm not being careful. I'm just kind of putting it on a little bit wherever I think it should go. If we think it should be more orange after, we can add more. But I think that's good for now. What do you think? Do you like it with the orange on there? I know it's a red truck, but I like to have lights and darks. That is a little uh, faded, so let's just go again. Okay, perfect. I think since I'm right here, I think that little headlight needs a little highlight. So what I did is take a little bit of yellow, add a little white to it, just give it like a little comma stroke. Not much, but just a little something there. And I am going to go back and see if the second coat of silver is gonna do the trick on our bumpers. Because we do wanna do our grill and um, let's see how this is gonna go for us. Another coat on the bumpers, which is fine. Got a little red on there, so we're going to color that up. I often think I'd like to paint a little fire truck with the tree on it. I think that would be a great painting. It's in my head, and now Christmas is coming so fast, but I decided I'm going to start with Christmas in July this year and do all kinds of Christmas pro projects right through Christmas because I wait too long and I can never do all of the projects that I want to do. Does anyone else have that problem, too many things, and and then the Christmas comes and is like, well, I don't know if I really want to paint Christmas now, but I have so many cool ideas, so we're going to start early next year. I put a little silver right around that headlight, just a little comma stroke there. These were just little, can you see I'm just taking my round brush, just pressing it down, making a little grill. I think that's all we have that silver. It is. So that's good. We don't need any more of that. We'll put the cap back on that. And let's see where we're at. Okay. A little red for his hat band. We forgot. Let's just do that. And it's nice and bright, which I like. If I'm, if I'm using a brush, a round brush that's a little large, if it has a nice point, it works well because you can get a nice fine line too. But if you're more comfortable, use a smaller brush and you have more control. Okay, let's go back and lighten that tree up. I've got one big glob here that's a little wet still. So I'm just going to brush on top of it and smooth it out and it will dry quicker. We have not had to put on the noisy hair dryer yet. But remember, if you have one handy and you're waiting for something to dry, you can always hit it with the hair dryer for a few minutes. And let's get 
our flat brush that we were using on the tree. And I want to show you a close up for a second of the painting again. All right. So now you can see these light green bits we're going to put on next, and they're a thinner line. And I'm going to show you, I make them on the chisel edge of the flat brush. And can you see how they curve? They're kind of a little straighter in the center of the tree and on the edges on both sides, I'm curving them in just to give a little shape to that tree. But on top of it, we'll go some snow after, so it's not gonna look finished yet, but let's just go into. Oh, hey, Patricia from Kentucky, popped on late. That's okay, you're gonna have the replay later on tonight when I put it up, but still keep me posted. I wanna see your pictures. Okay, the lighter green, it's like a leaf green. If you didn't have the leaf green, you could certainly take some of your yellow, mix it with your green. If you needed to, this has a tiny bit of white in it perhaps too. Here's how I do these chisel strokes. So before we were doing this with the flat strokes, now we're going to use our brush on the edge. Can you see how you can get a nice teardrop that way? Again, all these strokes come in handy later if we do some floral projects. You can do I can even show you real quick just for fun. Okay, so say you're doing a leaf. I would load my paint brush with some green. I would tip in one little edge in gr darker green, one little edge in white, and in one stroke, you can get some beautiful leaf. I have all kinds of little strokes like that to do roses, which are great fun. And so that's just a little preview of something to come when we're done with Christmas projects and we're looking for some fun spring and flowers. We'll do some stroke work, some uh, flowers. So that was just a little side note off track. But uh, anyway, we are going back to this green and we're going to do these little polywog strokes, say. Actually, you could even use them when you're painting flowers too. Look, you can get a nice, you don't want a green flower, but you could do a nice flower that way. Okay, so it's just that lighter leaf green color. And again, just mix up your green with yellow if you want. You just need a lighter shade. And I did them almost in like little groups of threes. I didn't do it everywhere, but just start that way. So you got one, two, three, maybe. One over here, two here, one, two, three, one. They're going from the bottom again up. That's the way we're building our tree. Kind of straight up in the middle, kind of curved to the side. They don't have to be perfect strokes. These aren't the stroked flowers that you want perfect strokes. I like them when they're a little feathery and a little wonky. And so I really am just pressing a little bit heavier and lifting up on the brush. You get a little bit of a polywog, a little bit of a comma stroke. It can go straight and then it can curve. You can do a bunch until your paint brushes out of paint and then you get a more scraggly one, which is fine. Again, we have snow coming on top, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of go back, fill in some little spots if you have them. And you can give your tree some shape by doing this. You can really give you know your tree some nice shape if you want to really curve those little guys in there. There. And we want this to dry before we add the snow. So that's kind of the way I'm gonna leave that right now. And while I have that color, I did use just a little bit of that on top with my round brush again, just on top of his hat, just, again, just so it's a little more interesting and has some light and some dark, that's enough. Now, let's put that little steering wheel in. It's just a little black line. It's just a little this and that. That's the little steering wheel. That finishes up the truck, except for the detailing and the snow and the writing. Let's put our detailing on our little accessories on our snow woman there. A nice trick, you guys might know this, but if you wanna make nice little dots, we're gonna put polka dots on her hat there. You can just use the back end of a paintbrush. I just kind of dip it into my white and just dot those little guys. And what's nice is you can vary the size, which I like. I wanna have a little bigger ones and then as I dot, they get a little smaller as I'm running out of paint. But I like that idea. I want them to be various sizes. So a heavier one and then little ones. There. That is pretty easy peasy. Little stripes I did on the hat band. Again, you can get as detailed as you want or as simple. You could leave them just solid colors. 
You could do plaid. You could do them any way you'd like. I just went and did some dark purple stripes on the hat band there. And then I went in between with some white. Nothing too fancy. Our little guys need faces, people. They're looking a little sad without any eyes or features. So let's um, give them features. So it's pretty simple. I give them little rosy cheeks because they've been out in the cold. You can just take the teeniest bit of white and red, make up a pink. Pretty simple, a little circle, just a little cheek. Now, if you can adjust it to whatever shade you like, I'm going to give him a little cheek too. And I'm going to paint on their little mouths and things, but if you feel better, you can use a Sharpie or a Micron. I have the uh, finer Sharpies and the little Micron pens. And you, as long as the paint underneath is dry, so wait till the end to do that, you can actually put their little features on with a pen or marker. I'm going to give her cheek a little highlight. It's very pink, so I'm going to just kind of go over a little bit with a little light. His is fine. His nose is looking a little like a beak to me. I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> but I'm going to take a tiny, because you can fix your mistakes. This is the great thing about acrylic. If you don't like something, you can paint completely over it. It might take a few coats. You might have to go over it with white, but it's acrylic. You can fix everything. So I'm going to just give him a little, a little nose job here. I'm going to go with the blue that we use for the background or something close to it. And I'm trimming up his nose because he looks a little like he's a duck with a beak. There, that's much better. What do you think? Better, guys? I think so. All right. They need a little eye. And I gave them little smiley mouths instead of the little uh, coal mouths, which are cute. But I, they needed to be a little... They're a funny, cute little family um, of snowmen. They need little smiles. When I'm doing detail work, I always add water to my paint. Mix it up. You don't want it so watery that it will drip on your canvas, but a little bit of water would really help with detail because then your paint doesn't drag and whatnot. You can really get some nice detail. So I have mixed up black and, black and some water just to thin it down a bit. And it's just really, you're only seeing the side of their mouth. So let me bring that up a little bit for you. And it's really just a little half. Oh, you know what? Look, I forgot my um, smile on Mrs. Snowman on my painting. So I'll add it here. And I will add it to the painting. That's all done because look at, she's, uh, you can only see from the side, but a little bit of a smile there. Okay. There. Eyes. Again, I'm just going to take a little black and it's just the littlest dot. So I'm just going to use the paintbrush. It's just a little dot and a little dot. That's all we need for features. Little cheeks, eyes, a little smile. They're very cute, and that's all we really need for them. I did add um, some stripes for the her scarf. I did them in yellow. I know if I go with this yellow right on top of that green, it is not going to really show up. So I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white to the yellow just to make it a little more opaque and that it will cover a little better. There. So it's just a, I just added a little bit of um, a little bit of yellow and white. And I just did them really quick. It was nothing fancy, just little diagonal stripes. You can put them going the other way if you want on the other scarf piece. The little middle is kind of a knot, so I do this just to make it look a little different. And then there. This guy also has little fringe on their scarf, so I'm going to go back with some green. When I'm making fringe on a scarf or something, I just start with some dots. Just little dots. I'm going to actually go to the other end of the brush. And like we did on the hat, some little dots. And I'm just going to pull.
pull a little of that paint out. Can you see it's looking a little like the fringe now? A little knotted fringe. What do you think? How's that look? Hi, Patty. Yes, um, you can do this tomorrow. It's going to be, I'm going to put it on the page, the video. If you look under video, it should be on the, on the feed like you see it here. But um, it'll also be up with the videos across the top. I will also, if anyone needs me to, I usually upload all my videos to YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel. So if that's easier than watching it on Facebook, I will upload that to YouTube tomorrow too. I'll put the link in one of the, in, in a post. And feel free to contact me if anyone has trouble finding that. But yeah, you can watch it anytime. Okay. So we've got all of our little scarves and hats and whatnot. I think his is all set. That's fine. It's a little streaky, but it works. I like the way it looks like it's shaded. We got this almost dry and we can put our snow on the tree. We can add a little textured snow down here. Looks like we're pretty well on our way. Does anybody see anything that we're missing except for the detail bits? Okay. So let's put on, let's start on with the, tr the snow. You can see how I added snow on the tree a couple of different ways. Some I did just with the little brush strokes like we did in the green and some I sort of just smudged on there. Then with the liner brush, I just put snow here and there, kind of where it would hit if it was snowing, where it would hit on the truck. A couple of little lines just to outline things. Again, we can do it with the liner brush or we can do it with the paint marker. And same with these guys. So let's put on some of those little white bits. Again, with the paint marker, you really want to make sure that the area is dry that you're using. I really like the Posca pens. They are a great paint marker. They work for if you like to paint rocks, if you like to paint all sorts of things. These markers are fabulous. I'm going to try it. My little tire centers are um, pretty dry. So let me try it with the marker just so I can show you that. And then we'll also do it with a liner brush. So... I did very simple snowflakes. They're not hard, they're just a series of lines. I go down the middle, across the middle, so it's across, and then just again. I put little dots on the ends if we need to. Little, little lines, sometimes that's how a snowflake looks, a little dot in the middle. It's really pretty simple, basic, snowflake looking design. So again, just make a cross. Cross again in the middle. Little dots on the ends and on the middle. And some little lines. Very snowflake looking. So see how simple it is to use the marker? Oh, hi Kay. Well, um, I got these at C.C. Lowell's here in Worcester. It's a little art shop. But I'm sure I'm pretty sure the craft shops all carry them too. If you don't find them, just look up Posca pens. Um, I'm sure they're on Amazon. If you have any trouble at all finding them, let me know and I can research that a little bit more for you. They come in a couple of sizes. This is the, the thinner point. There's also a wider one and they come in an amazing assortment of colors. There's also a website, Posca.com. It's P-O-S-C-A, Posca pens. Oh, sure, I just did P-O-S-C-A. It's Posca, Marianne. Alrighty, so I like the way that looks, and I don't really want to... I want to let this dry a little more before we do any of the writing on there. Let's put our snow on our tree. I'm going to go with the flat brush again. And again, because I've rinsed this off, I really want to make sure it's nice and dry. I don't want to um, have any watery paint dripping down my painting. We are going to our white. And take your white, wipe some off. We're gonna just, at, the, at first, dry brush a little white here and there. So really, really dry brush, which means not much paint on there at all. This is what that scuffed kind of paint, uh, snow look came from. Can you see how I'm not really covering? I'm just hitting the top of the canvas and because of the canvas's texture, you have that kind of scuffed look. If there's not a lot of paint on your brush, that's what you want. You want to take most of it off and then just lightly, kind of like it's a little bit of snow drift on the tree. Oh, that was a little bit of that green, which was still a little wet. 
Um, so I'm just going to skip around that little spot. Now, I want to get a little heavier because the snow's falling and it's, it's gathering inside the leaves of the tree. Now I'm going to take the paint and we're going to do those strokes like we did for the little green branches on the top. We just want to give some like this. We're pressing again and pulling, pressing and pulling. We're just getting a little white into our tree just to make it look a little snowy. You can see how on the sides I curve it in every now and then here. There, it's looking a little more wintry. I think I went a little heavier with some of mine here and there. So I'm just gonna kinda go a little heavier now than the dry brush and just put a little bit of snow here and there. I want it to look kinda messy, windblown. There, I think that's good. Now, I'm going back to my liner brush, which again was not not really a really tiny one, but it's good enough to do all the little bits that we need to for detailing, not the writing, but for the snow. And I am going to just, you can follow along my picture if you'd like, or start now and wherever you think snow is gonna land, you just put it there. The brush stroke I'm kind of using is, I'm just, um, let me get back to this plate. I know it's white on white, it'll be kind of hot. Why don't I do it on a paper towel to show you? And I give a little pressure and pull, and sometimes a little more pressure and pull. I just want to avoid a perfect outline line. First of all, that's difficult, and if it doesn't look perfect, then it bothers people. So I make it messy on purpose, a little heavier, a little lighter. On, on mine, some places I put it really heavy because it was like building up on that little spot. Like here, press this on top of here, I know we did all our nice shading, but you still see it. It just looks like snow is kind of a little thinner here, and then we could go thicker and thinner. Across the top here, I thought there might be some. And then, just to give it a little outline, I did some across here. Oh, you know what we forgot is the little silver door handle. We can do that in a sec. Because this is a little definition here where the door was, I just did... Again, it's not a perfect line, so that's why I kind of stop and start. I think there'd be a little snow on the step side there. I put a little snow on the top of the bumper, a little bit on top of the light. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You do it where you would like. This is kind of a way to make it your own, too. Actually, I put some snow on the top of her hat because she's out in the snow. She would have snow landing. Oh, and even on their little noses, a little snow. Little snow on there. He's in the truck. I don't know why he'd have snow on his nose, but he does. And there we are. I think that that's everything except for the writing here and the little door handle. So let's just take, I don't even need to wash this out. I'm just going to take a little silver paint and I'm going to give a little door handle to my truck there. There. All right. How's everybody's painting coming along? You guys doing okay? Okay, so now I'm going to add a little heavier snow to her. I just kind of liked um, just a little bit, little bit heavier on there. Again, I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just adding some in just to give her some dimension. You could do that any way you want if you thought, oh, I want these a little heavier. Well, we don't want it to be gray, but... If we want to add a little heavier snow anywhere there, we could. And we also have that snow text, which I'll show you now, because that is kind of cool. All right. So um, snow text, if you happen to have some, is kind of fun to play with. This is, again, what it looks like. Um, you can get it at Michael's. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. I ordered some on Amazon because it was a little hard to find. But uh, it is seemed to be getting back in stock. I just pull out a little bit with a palette knife. Can you see how it's thick and snow-like? Really works nice on your ceramic pieces too. So I'm putting it on my paper plate with a palette knife. I have found the palette knife, I've tried putting it on with the palette knife where you want it. I think it's a little bit harder to handle, so i rather just do it with my finger. And I'm just gonna see where I put it on my painting over here. Okay, so you can just take it with your finger, kind of glob it on, and it adds a little texture and it's kind of fun. It will dry and it will stay textured like this. 
and I kind of put it like on top of where a snowdrift would be, kind of where I made those wide streaks of white with my flat brush. It's a little tricky, it takes a little getting used to, but um, it adds a nice touch. And I think also I'm gonna show you the glitter, which if this dries, if you wanted to get sparkly, you could too. Right, this little snowdrift in front of her, I think is a nice place for some of the snow techs. I think it would be a little heavier right close to you in the foreground too. So I am going to go and put a little bit more here. It's, um, it's tricky. There. But again, I tried with the palette knife, I've tried with a brush, and it just doesn't seem to go where I want it. So I'm using my finger. I'm messy as it is already, so I guess a little snow text is not going to matter. Okay. Let me lift that up and see if you can see that texture. There. Can you see? You can see there how it's kind of textured. And now do you understand why I did the light blue behind the snow. I know snow is white and your first instinct might be paint it all white, but then you'd have to go over and shade, shade it somehow. I think it's easier to start darker and add that white on top. All right, well, I think um, this is dry enough to do some writing. I'm not sure what I'm gonna write on mine. I have Hughes Tree Farm on the other one. So, oh, and you know, I didn't highlight her little arm. Let's do that, and then we'll decide what we're going to write. Again, her arm is fine. You could leave it, her, her, her branch. I just take a little brown and white and make a little bit lighter shade than what we worked with here. And I just, I'm not even worried about where I'm putting it. I'm just putting a little line of light brown in there. Do you see how it's not a huge thing? It's not a big detail, but it just adds a little pizzazz, I think. There. So let's write something on there. And again, you might be more comfortable with the pen. And if not, you could just take a small liner brush and paint something on. You can use chalk if you'd like or pencil and write it first. So you're not just going on there blindly. Of course, don't, you know, um, chalk works fine or just a little pencil. I usually jump right in. I thin my paint down a little bit like I showed you when we were doing detail before. Just add a little bit of water to a little bit of whatever color I'm using. And I think I'm going to go with the white. It shows up the best. And oh, here's an idea, too. And we've done this with other paintings at Christmas when we have had our paint nights. Once your painting is all done, just take your phone, snap a picture of it, and you can crop it right in your um, photos in your phone. And then just have prints made up, say at CVS or Walgreens or whatnot. And then you can just mount them with double-sided tape onto the blank cards you can get. I know Walmart sells big packages of them, Michaels does. And you have a great Christmas card. So you just take a little double-sided tape, take your photograph that you've made of your painting, put it on your little blank card, and people will be so impressed. They will think you're amazing. And if you're like me and haven't got your Christmas cards out yet, there's still plenty of time. Okay. Let me put on, I'm just gonna, a lot of people like to put like the name with Tree Farm. Um, I think I might just write Santa Express just to make something a little bit more generic, just so you can see. And it could be Santa's little red express truck. Remember the little red express trucks? They were pretty cute. Again, you can put whatever you want. Santa's Express, be his little delivery service. But it would be great with your name on there and making them into your little Christmas card would be ideal. And there we are. Now the fun part. Like I said, if you want to go in, you could use metallic on your star if you wanted. 
but how many people have used this technique with the toothbrush to put your snow on? I know we've done it in our paint nights a lot. I'm going to get clean water for that, though, because we do not want pink snow. So bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. I will be right back. Next time I'll have lots of water handy. I usually do. I don't know what I was thinking. I prepared so well for tonight so early, I forgot the simple things. So anyway, let's get a little clean white paint. Again, it's all just acrylics that we've been using all night. And again, I put out way too much paint. Ordinary toothbrush. You always get one when you go to the dentist. So there's always an extra one hanging around. And we are going to spatter our snow on. So I'm taking some water on my toothbrush pretty good amount. Mix it in with your paint and just pull it aside. You want the paint to be watery. You don't want it to be, again, watery so it drips, although we're working flat so we don't have to worry about that. And you just load your brush up with that paint and you just spatter snow. How cool is that? This is my favorite part. If you don't like something on your paint, on your painting, put a lot of snow on it. I go over the whole painting. If you get some little bits like these guys here, they look a little bit more like shooting stars, you can remove them, or you could leave them for a little character. Even though it's white down here, I still do it. I go over everything, actually. Thanks, Patsy. I um, got your message, and I did email you back, and then um, I tried to send you a picture of the base-coated tree but the mail came back to me so I don't know if you got my messages or not but um I did answer you thanks I like this I like using sparkle for my snow yes and I'm gonna pull out some glitter in a minute because I'm dying to make it a little bit glittery okay so, oh spat spot spackle oh you're gonna use spackle for your snow yes I was going to say if you have spackle or uh, a mixed media paste or something like that that would work as well to make just some dimension. And then when it's dry, you can put a little of the glitter on top. Okay, um, what do you think? Think I have enough? You can. It's easy to overdo. I'm gonna leave it go. Now, if you would like, I usually just leave it like this, but if you would like some bigger little um, snowflakes in, the, in between, you can certainly afterwards just take your little brush again and just dot. That's all uh, certainly up to you. Now, there's some great glitter, and, I, and I'm not a big glitter fan of like the glitter that goes everywhere and stays for the rest of your life, everywhere in your house. These glitter, this is a Craft Twinkles, it's called. It's by Deco Art. It's kind of more, I think of it as like a glue with glitter in it and dries clear. There's this one, and there's also this Glitterific, which is Folk Art product. It's a little bigger pieces of glitter, but still, you can you see, it's kind of, it's like, it's like paste, it's like glue. And it's really cool because it adds a lot of sparkle. And who doesn't love sparkle, especially at Christmas? Um, so you kind of can just pat it on almost. Can you see it's pretty thick and it's pretty sparkly. And you, you, you don't want to go overboard, but I think I want it just on my snow. My snow text might be a little wet still. I don't want to drag it off with the glitter. So I am going to just kind of go around it for now. You could pat some on, I suppose, but it looks like it's just going to make that part of it run. I would go around it for the time being, especially where this is still a little wet. I'm not going to put it on the snowman, but you're welcome to. You could put it on the tree. You could, you could do wherever you want. It depends on how much you love glitter. Are you able to see that now? Can you see that a little bit? That really was a big glob there. But I'm almost using it as if it's like a little snow drift. Yeah, we'll put one little bit here, and I think that is enough. Let's see if I can lift that up so you can see that. Can you see how it's a, a little sparkly? There. I think I would like it on my star, though. I think I don't want it on the rest of it, but I think it would be appropriate on the little star. So let's just add a little there. And it has little tiny bits of glitter in there that sort of pick up whatever color you're putting on there. And I think I'll go ahead and add this onto my original as well. 
So there. Now, don't forget you always want to sign your paintings. And I usually do that again with a Sharpie. I usually go to the lower right hand corner. You can do it on the back if you want with a date. You can do it any way you want. But I usually do it with my little Sharpie right in the corner. You want to be proud of your work and you want to put your name on there after all your hard work. So what do you think? Oh, hey, Jen. Thank you. I did get, oh, yeah. Oh, Patsy, you know what? It, it's fine. Also, I should have said you can do that. Um, it's, if Patsy asked earlier about painting the whole background in the blue and then tracing the design on, which is absolutely fine. Um, I do that a lot, especially um, with some of my paintings. I paint whatever the background is, and then I sketch the design on top. But here I just thought for people that hadn't painted before, it might be easier just to have them paint all around, and we'll do our steps forward. But no worries at all. I'm sure it's going to come out fine. Hey, thank you, Patricia. She said it's super cute. Um, anyway, I finished mine. How are you guys doing? Let me know because I can hang around here and answer questions and, and tech, do some techniques if you need it. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. I'm just dying to see what you guys all have created tonight. So I'm going to hang out for a bit and you can let me know um, if you need any help with any little techniques. I'm looking at the video now a little bit of it because it is on a slight delay and looking at my messy painting area here. And let me know what you think about the format. I've tried different ways from the side. Um, I thought the top would be better for you all to see close up what I'm working on. Was it good? Did it work out for you? Did you see what you should see? I just want to have feedback because this is, uh, we, did, we did a lot of ceramic lives, but uh, I think this might be the first canvas one we've done live. So I'd love to know what you think. I'm going to try to save some of that glitter too there. So I'm going to put that in. And I wonder what everybody's up to for the holidays. Do you have any special plans? Are you getting together with a small group of family? Are you Zooming? Are you... Uh, my family, a lot of it is in Florida, so we will certainly do a lot of FaceTiming. And that will be fun. And like I said, we're going to watch our Christmas movies. And do some Christmas projects. How about that? Maybe make cookies. I have lots and lots and lots of Christmas cookie cutters, and I have yet to use them. So let me take a look at the comments. Hi, Kay. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, that's um, the WhatsApp. I, I have to uh, figure that out because that's intriguing me, and I'm just not real sure about it yet because I know there's some ways that we could all keep in communication with that so that will be fun I know that lots of people keep in touch with their family overseas and whatnot and uh, it's nice to have an app like that okay well okay yes give it a try and show me your pictures and let me know if you need anything oh hey Jan you didn't have white I'm sure it looks fine what did you improvise with How did you do the black shading on the truck? Okay, I'll show you that again now. Um, it's actually shaded with a little black and red, but let me show you how I did that. I'm going to just move this aside a little bit and let me get, um, let me grab a piece of white paper so I can show you exactly how we did. Oh, actually, actually I'll get another paper plate. I'll do it on a paper plate. All right, so let's pretend that this is our canvas now. And we've got the shading, so here's our truck, say, right? It's really rough, so don't judge. <laughs> and then we have these little wheel wells here, say. Okay, so we had painted the truck red, of course, first. We gave it a little, some highlights of orange and whatnot. But here's how I shade, and I took a little bit Oh, I just want to mix up a little bit of that because it's kind of dried now. So I've just mixed up a little black and red. So it's not just black. It's a little bit of a maroon shade, say. So that's a little color that we're going to use to shade. And it's a technique I did with the water and the paint on one corner of the brush. And so you wet your brush but tap it off. You don't want it dripping paint like this. You tap it off so you, your, your brush is holding a good amount of water, but it's not dripping. 
and then just dip one corner of that flat brush into that dark color. Before you go ahead on to your piece, tap it out a little bit. This brush is actually, hang on, because it's, um, I was uh, nagging you about washing your brush and keeping them clean to protect them, and I neglected to do that. So, do as I say, not as I do. And I just wanted to get that paint out of there. Okay, so now it's again, just the water on the brush, tap it off. Tape some of that dark maroon. But pat it out a little bit first, so you can see the gradation of from the paint to where the paint is just kind of mixed with the water. You want wherever you want your darkest shadow, you use that side of the brush, and you just can do that. You can tap your brush off then, and you can do it again if you need to have it blended a little more. But this is just a way to do it and blend all in one stroke. I also showed you if you wanted to do it with just the dark paint. So say you went where you want your shadow, just like this. I like it to have a, um, a solid line where the shadow is, but you want it to be shaded here. You don't want that solid line. So you could just put your paint on with your brush like that, and then with just a brush with just water on it, while the paint is still wet, do it fairly quickly so you don't let that color dry and then you can just shade it like that so it's just a matter of putting your color in where you need it so you wanted it under here and then just softening softening the edge it's just a nice technique and again there's two ways once you get proficient with just practicing with that water with a little color on just one corner and always just patting it out first you can use that in all sorts of ways to shade you could shade all sorts of things with that technique. And again, I'm going to try to do some little videos that just show you some brush stroke things that you can practice. Okay, Jen, you started late and your phone died. Well, we were having a, quite an issue with our internet um, in the beginning, so it must be something in the air tonight. On the computer now. Look forward to finishing this and see. I can't wait to see everyone's finished projects, too. And it's easy to take a break and not have time to paint. I know it's hard, but I'm so glad you're back painting again. Um, oh, you're welcome. Thank you for the, she's thanking me for the grown-up time. And, and, and it is fun grown-up time, but it's also fun if you want to paint with the kids. If you if you got them a couple little canvases and put the video on, and it'd be amazing to see what they come up with. It would be really fun to see. And I do love to see people getting back into painting. Some of my favorite, favorite times at paint night is when someone comes in that says, oh, you know, I used to paint and I don't have time or a place to do it. And they, they attend the paint night and they love it and they go out and they buy paint. And that's my best, the, the best thing I can hear is like, oh, I went out and I bought paints and I, and I started painting again. I know it's hard to find a time, the time and the place, but I tell you, it gives you such joy. And with the times that we're living through now, it's so anxious and so stressful and, um, we need a little outlet, and, and art is a great outlet, and it's great therapy, and uh, I'm sure you guys will agree. Once you sit down, your mind goes off of other things, and you come out with something beautiful and something that you can show your family and friends. These painted on little 5 by 7 canvases would be fun little gifts to give out, and if anybody wants a little small tracer like that, please let me know. I can make the tracer any size for you, and as far as a place to paint, it's it's nice when you have a little place dedicated, but it doesn't have to be fancy. You could have a little tiny corner with just your where you can work. And um, I, I, I urge you to, to to keep it up and try it on your own. There's so many video tutorials out there online, and um, I'm gonna have a lot more as well. So I look forward to showing you some other things. And please, if you have any suggestions on things you might want to see going forward, I actually have a couple of paintings here to show you that we might do in January. I thought maybe if I showed you, you could tell me which ones you like, which ones you'd like to paint next, and we could have a little voting on those. Um, oh, Marianne, yes, I was just saying, I'm going to do more classes, absolutely. Um, and the brush strokes, yes, Patsy. The brush strokes are pretty interesting. I'll make up some charts after Christmas when, when I get a little more time, and we will practice because, I, like I said, the brush stroke roses, and I used to paint um, for a furniture company for many, many years, and 
back in the 80s and remember how popular all the hand-painted furniture was. I would whip through and do those flowers and those roses and all. I got it down as fast as I could and by using all the different brush strokes and I'm dying to show them to you. So let me, um, I mixed with silver, it came out more of a night scene. Oh, I love it. I think that would be fabulous. I really want to see them done differently. This is great to follow along and paint my painting, but wouldn't it be fun to do all kinds of different ways. You could do this as a sky with, say, the northern lights or whatever. You could just use your imagination. Shooting stars, people add in little shooting stars sometimes, which is kind of fun. And let me pull up those other paintings here. Let me see if I can show them to you. And I'm going to put this aside. If anyone needs anything else, let me know. But I'm going to move this camera now and hopefully it doesn't kind of go wonky on me again. And hello, everybody. There, it's it's um it's uh, a little close. Let me back up. <laughs> it's a little close. I don't really want to see my face that close up. So, listen. This is um God. I I look kind of weird with those glasses on. This is um birch tree with cardinals. I've done a billion of them, and people always love them. This one is um the birch trees. Two cardinals this time. Just very simple, very graphic. Again. You could do any kind of sky. We've done the night sky with this, and it's fabulous. We've done a really light, light periwinkle sky. So this is the cardinals with the birch trees. This is a great, these are all winter ones, so I'm thinking February. Um, the snowy owl, which I guess is now up on, by Salisbury. People have been getting some great photographs of the snowy owl. So that's kind of a fun one, very simple. Once this is traced on, it's really simple. As you can see, he's not a, he's, Ah, he doesn't have a lot of detail, but his eyes are fabulous. I'm upside down. Am I upside down? Jeez Louise. My phone maybe is upside down. Let's let's try this. There. Am I not standing on my head now? I think I'm going to... I see I'm upside down over there, so I'll get this all down eventually. Thank you guys for your patience and hanging out and uh, all my little bloopers. And this is a little night scene. And look at those trees, those are fun. And again, it's just a dark green with some, I don't know why it's trying to reconnect again. It seems like when I move or manipulate the phone, it pops out and pops back in. So anyways, and that's a little cabin in the woods. Again, these are pretty simple paintings, but they're lovely winter paintings. Oh no, and so January, if anyone's looking for some paintings, if you like these, let me know. If you like one in particular more than the other, let me know, we'll schedule one first. I also have some cute snowman paintings um, for Valentine's Day. So it's snowman holding the heart. So it's still wintry there of then, of course. And um, so we will have some snowmen still, but uh, we're going to start in July, like I said, with more Christmas. So we'll look forward to that. So I'm going to just quickly look at your comments and, uh, oh, thank you guys. All right. I think I've kept you long enough. I appreciate you being with me in painting tonight. Thank you for suffering through the little glitches. Any comments, suggestions, feedback, please let me know. And please, please, please post your pictures and your paintings and your in-progress paintings to the page or on the comments here, wherever you would like. I will probably pop on live again before Christmas, but who knows? It's coming so fast. Um, Merry Christmas to all. And um, it was so great to paint with you. Thanks for tuning in. And we will talk.